Hi, I'm Heather Murray, and welcome to my Magical Backgrounds instructional art class online. And I wanted to do this because uh, a number of you had inquired about how I create dimension and interest and uh, a liveliness in my backgrounds. And uh, I thought I would share my, my secrets with you and my techniques. And the way I'll be going about this is to show you three projects and step-by-step uh, -step instructions. So follow me uh, while I lead you into the world of magical backgrounds. are back with uh, project one and the abstract background is what we're going to tackle with this project and I start with a 12 by 16 uh, canvas I like the stretched ones better um, but sometimes the flat uh, canvas panels adhere a little better as do the birch uh, cradled panels so I don't have to really be too concerned in this particular piece about um, placement at this point. This is kind of the look I'm going for. Something playful, a little bit fun, but I don't want to crowd it with too many elements. So I'm going to take the elements away and then I'm going to start painting fairly free form. Um, I'll demonstrate as I go along, but my particular style with abstract is to see what happens. There is no real conformity to this. Um, I pick colors that I enjoy working with, I apply them at random, and my aim is to fill up the page or to fill up the, the whole canvas if possible. So here we go. I'll start with a really bright color that I like, kind of a fuchsia. And it may not seem to have any rhyme or reason with it. I'll blend colors together. And I can always color them later if they don't work out. Or at least in my mind's eye if they don't work out. But for now I'll just be playful and add, add colors at random. Often I don't even clean my brush. I'm just looking at coverage at this juncture. And you find you get some fun things happening when you don't clean your brush because you're not getting clean colors, but you're getting interesting patterns and play. Red is a, such a dynamic color. And here I'm picking up some of the other colors with my red. And we'll see what happens with this. Now, even though at this point in time, I'm covering the canvas, when I put my photo elements on top, I may decide to make some changes, but at least I have a background started here. So I can, I can play with it and mix to my heart's content. I seem to be using a lot of blue and red shades here. Um, you can see I'm filling up the canvas and um, it's looking a little more complete now. I'll just keep working at it. And I, I would like to let you know that I normally don't work this quickly, but I'm conscious that this is an instructional video and you don't want to see all my pondering and pausing through, through the process. So this is a, like an ultra fast version of what I would normally do. Now, I like to, some of you have may noticed in other videos, I like to use the end of the paintbrush and sometimes scribble in some marks or patterns. It just adds a little extra 
to an abstract, I believe. Yeah, so just right now we're filling the space. And you can do this however way you like. If you like to do a stipple effect or um, patterns in your background, all of it's fine. It's just creating a, a, a base for your, for your portrait. And also an expressive base, because even though I'm doing this fast, it's kind of fun. I see some interesting things happening with it. So we can pull back a little bit and see a little bit more of what we have happening here. You see, it's not right on its own. It could be an abstract painting. It wouldn't really be complete as far as I'm concerned, but it would, it's a starting point. Okay, let's see what happens now when we add our elements, because I think this is where the interesting part happens. Okay, here's the complete piece from another angle. I'm stepping back a little bit. Um, we can turn it whichever way we like. Maybe it will look better this way. Um, we'll only know when we start to put our elements into the piece. So assuming this is mostly dry, I usually wait till it's dry. I'll start to place my subjects into the piece and see how it works. Kind of pleased with that. I'll probably have to mute some of the background though in order to highlight the, the, the portrait and the faces and the dog. <laughs> Let's put our, I've put some matte medium on the back of my cut out images. And I've also put matte medium on my substrate. So this will give a good grab. And hopefully if everything goes right, we'll have something to work with now. And I just burnish mostly with my fingers. It's, uh, it is helpful to have your paint underneath nice and dry so you don't have to worry about bleeding into your image unnecessarily. That I've got a little bit happening here, but I'll probably use some of those shades anyway. So that's fine. You get the idea. And I'm just going to place the Jack Russell in the air, bounding like super dog, <laughs> as Jack Russells do, true to form. And I'll use my brush to blend this in a little bit better so you get the idea. So as I'm filming this as I go, I make mistakes like everyone else, and I wanted to highlight how I remedy a little mistake here. I have uh, my Jack Russell, I pulled some of the blue paint. Again, I didn't follow my own rule, and it wasn't completely dry. So I just added a little medium to a paper towel, and this actually pulled up a lot of the, the blue paint from the Jack Russell face. Maybe a little bit in the Jack Russell will add to the whole piece, so I'm just leaving that for now and not being overly concerned. And then just trying to burnish the spots where I'm not sure that it's adhered well. You can use your fingers or you can use a cloth or a paintbrush, whatever you like, but probably a good idea to start with a clean brush, <laughs> unlike me. <laughs> now I made an executive decision here to pull some of the purpley magenta color into my woman's cheeks and along with the Jack Russell color um, even a little bit here and there I think it will be blend and actually enhance the painting a little bit more to have some of these colors move through the figures it just uh, 
we're all we're looking for a blend and a feeling of a painterly effect by the time we finish so there's so many ways we can do that you can leave them i don't like the feeling of the figures popping up from the canvas too much i like the layered look but i like it to not necessarily look like it's been glued on so i will also paint with medium around the edges to smooth smooth the edges of the image and that's my rooster in the background apologies for that there's always lots of background noises in my studio <laughs> so i'm just going to stand back a little oh, thank you thank you rooster <laughs> and um see what i think about this because i may revisit it later when it's a bit more dry i like to often go away from a piece and come back <laughs> and um, the rooster agrees with me <laughs> and then decide what I want to do if I want to make some changes I'm coming back with a fresh set of eyes okay so we'll come back in a minute so I'm back again and I'm using a little bit of a Naples yellow and with the, the orchestra behind me as my backdrop, <laughs> I'm just experimenting to see whether this works or not. That's, I keep coming back to this because it isn't an exact art. It really is about, this is the fun part about this kind of mixed media collage painting, is it really is your own sensibility. And there's no one that can say you have to do it a particular way. It really is how you, what your eyes see and what you find appealing personally. And that varies for all of us. So don't be too hard on yourself. Try to be playful. Try to keep that, that element going. Um, and then also realize you're, you're creating a whole painting, not just a, not just a focus on one object or one subject. So, so always look at the whole piece when you're putting this together, see how the colors play together, see if they match. Um, you probably won't have the distraction of a rooster in your background, so you might, you might be able to think a little bit more straight than I do. So maybe even a little yellow in the Jack Russell, I don't know. I think it's okay because this is an imaginary piece, so you can have fun with it a little bit more. And she's probably a, has a bit more gray hair, but we don't have to give her gray hair if we don't want to. That's the nice thing about it. I'm visualizing a little blue in here as well, and I might have to go and find it. I'll be right back. Here's a close-up view of my palette. If you've watched my videos before, you may this may be familiar to you, but I am very messy and disorganized. I know I have my own system going. But see, I can find that little dot of blue that I'm looking for, <laughs> even though it's well hidden and camouflaged. So I'm gonna come back and add a little bit of blue to her blouse, little dots, and just see how that goes. The beauty of acrylic is you're not, you're not married to it being, a, being forever. You can always help cover it if it doesn't seem right. But I see her, her dress is kind of old fashioned cheerful and I wanna pick that up with my colors chosen. It's a direct contrast to a modern background. So again, I think that's what makes it interesting is if you choose something that makes your viewer go, hmm, wonder why she put that together, then I think you're probably on the right track. Hello, this is my muse, Eddie, and he's already up in my chair ready to help. Um, he's, a, he's a little bit of inspiration. Everyone should have an Eddie. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to the work. Twelve by, 11, 12 by 16 canvas. I've painted it gray um, and I've let it dry. So what I'll be doing is using my colors on top 
to create a muted effect, which I think can be very, very um, effective. So um, it also creates a moodiness that, that I don't seem to get when I use strictly white gesso background. So here I've got these colorful lads. They're looking very playful, um, hamming it up for the camera probably many years ago. And then I've got this big top tent, which I've been wanting to use for a while and couldn't find the right composition to use it with. So I think for this one, I think it works. It, it creates enough interest to, to show you there's a little bit of a circus playfulness about this. I may add more at the end, I may not. But I'm going to start with a very simple background so that my figures are highlighted well and the story comes through loud and clear. So, okay, we'll start. Okay, so I'll just hold this here for a minute to remind you of where we're at. Um, and then I'll remove these guys again. And I will start, sometimes I use a little medium that I have left on my brush to mix with the paints and that also adds a more fluid effect. So here, let's just see what happens. I'm going to use some of my favorite colors uh, for the background, which tend to be a turquoise and a parchment. And I think that, again, it, this kind of backdrop lends itself well to, to this technique. And I don't, I'm kind of looking for the gray to even show through in parts. I think that adds another interest to the painting. If it's not all covered and flat looking, you can pick up the texture of your brushes. Sometimes that's the value of using even a cheaper brush for this kind of project. They do get mucked up rather quickly. If you've, if you've used medium before, you know it's it's a bit of a trial to keep it clean all the time and keep your brushes in good shape. But the nice thing about them when they get a little bit older is that you get more texture with them and you get the, the flying bristles doing things that make your painting interesting. Okay, so there's simple. So we've got some, some parchment and I'm just going to add some blue or turquoise blue to the bottom. I'm imagining this will end up being the sky, but I, I'm saying the bottom now, just because I'm looking at it from the bottom up. You use whatever colors you like, because that's what's going to make your portrait really interesting is your own personal imprint. And I'm going to add a little parchment to this turquoise and see what happens. That might be a little too light, so I do like to play with it somewhat. So let's do that, see what happens, and we'll get a little bit, we'll get a few different shades happening here. I'm really aiming for muted here. I don't want it to overtake the, the foreground of this painting. This is merely to provide a backdrop. So you can see when I've blended the colors, I get a little bit more action happening, which is nice. Again, sometimes purely accidental. And then I will usually not leave a line there. I'm famous for my horizons and for maybe not famous, notorious maybe, <laughs> in my own mind, for horizons. And sometimes I'll use a marking pencil to highlight that, but there's something visually interesting for me when I um, divide the page like this or divide the painting. It just gives it a little bit more um, of a, I, I guess it gives it more dimension. Okay. So now I'm going to let this dry for a minute or so, or a few minutes or however long it takes. It's a warm day here and I, it's taking a little bit longer for things to dry. So we'll just wait and see and I'll come back when this is dry and then we'll place our, our figures over top and see how it looks. Yeah. 
Okay, for those of you who watch my videos or pay attention to my instruction in any way, this is my, my personal pot of gold. <laughs> I tend to use a lot of medium. You can see I'm almost through this big bottle and it's a, a gallon jar or if you're in Canada, 3.78 liters. So I would really hardly recommend if you love doing these projects to get this big this big baby because it really does make a difference. Um, matte medium can be very expensive when you buy it in a little tiny tub. With these, these guys, they last a long time. I think I can make this last almost a year. So I would, even though it costs a little bit more, I think it's worth it in the long run. That's my endorsement. But I won't, I won't endorse any brands because I think whatever you can get close to home or mail order or online is fabulous. It'll all work well for you, I'm sure. Okay, that's enough about medium. I love it. <laughs>